Yorkshire, which is uh, now modern day Holland. So we would have been recruited by the Roman army and we were sent over here to fight. So you ready to Yeah, yeah, you're in Europe now. Yeah. Well, I'm going to end. Enjoy it. Uh, yeah. it's, it's good this we saw this this morning. Yeah. Have a good one anyway. So yeah, see you later. So we were very well suited to fight the people in this area. And as you can see, we're very different from the uh, typical Roman soldier. As you can see, this, this fellow here is my, my bodyguard, so he's all armoured up. And his armour is very different from the legionnaires. He's got chainmail on and a helmet. And as you can see further over there, that's a first century auxiliary. So you can see the evolution of the Roman soldiers through the ages. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the weapons that they use as well. So this is a Seax, and this is uh, a weapon that everyone would have owned because not only was it a, a dagger used in warfare, but it was a status symbol as well. It was to show people that you were a free man because you could carry a blade. And uh, in the battle lines, you couldn't have enough room to swing a sword or an axe. What you do is you go up to the guy, you go over his shield, and then you'd slice him on the back of the throat like that, and he'd be down instantly. Or if you were feeling particularly nasty that day, you could also go underneath the shield, the slice that way. And that may not kill a man, but it will end his life. So, there's that, and now we've got the axe as well. So, so this is a bearded axe, and it's called that because it was shaped of the like the man's beard of the time. You can see here we've got a good example of a, of a beautiful bushy beard, like most men would have had. So like myself, still, still working on it. Um, and these would have been owned by every man because it would have been used as a, as a tool for chopping wood, or you could use it as a hammer as well. But on the battlefield, it would have been used to cut away the enemy shield and then go in for a couple of chops like that. Or maybe you could go around the back of his neck, pull him down, or perhaps you could go low again, go for the legs and trip him up that way, and then he'd get trampled by my men or his men. You know, he's not going to have a nice day. And then, what else we got? We've got the spear. Now, the spear is my personal favourite weapon because it puts a nice long distance between me and the guy I'm trying to kill. And we've been used to push away and <laughs> stand in front of me all armoured up with his shield and I'd go over the top of him and then try and kill someone like that. So I'm totally protected so that is an ideal situation for me. So a lot of the spears look like this, they'd uh, be very cheap to manufacture, just one piece of wood, one tiny piece of metal there. But you also had the boar spear. Now this is a hunting spear and it was used to hunt boars, surprisingly. Um, so you can always recognise a boar spear because of the wings on it. So that's when you're hunting a boar, if it comes and you stab it, a boar will run up a regular spear because they will they will go forever and they'd like gorge you and everything. So you put the wings on there so that when you stab a boar, it couldn't run up and attack you. But on the battlefield, they made great use of these again. Similar to the axe, what they do is they go over an enemy shield, hook it away, stab him, slice him off real good. So there is a very effective Now, swords were very expensive to manufacture in the German auxiliaries. So if you had a sword, it's kind of like, it's a status symbol. It's like, I'm a, I'm a posh guy, I know how to use a weapon. But they didn't use them like the Romans did, they didn't stab them. He came down with force and it was a special weapon. If you got able to like break someone's bones or just scare them really because having a big sword like that it's shield, it's not nice. So that's like turning up to the battlefield with a Ferrari. It's like, look at me, I'm a big posh guy. So I, I usually give it to my bodyguards. Oh, and uh, my bodyguard here is going to volunteer to demonstrate what the armor is like and how well it can protect you. But he's wearing primitive chainmail here, similar to the first century auxiliary. And chainmail is basically impossible to cut through. So I can hack and slash at this guy all day. And he can't even feel it, can you? Can you? No. He loves it, he loves it. Uh, I think this is, this is a show, right? We just do this for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's his chainmail, and underneath that he's got a gambeson on, which is just layer upon layer of linen, and it's great for like 
concussive blows, like you can't feel it at all. I just, I cannot stress how much <laughs> he loves this. You know? um, and then he's got his helmet as well, it's very similar in style to the, to the Roman helmet, so apart from one key difference that um, the auxiliary, the German auxiliaries, they didn't have any space for the ears like the Romans, because the Romans, they wanted to hear their orders, they wanted to know where they were going and what they were doing. My guys are just kind of like, ah, I know what I'm doing, I can fight. So they didn't care what they were hearing, they just wanted to be protected. So you've got the chief guards there, the fine with that, you've got the neck guard as well, and then uh, very, very Germanic influence, the nasal guards, so something's coming across the face. It's fine, yeah, and he's safe. Maybe a bit of a headache, but, you know, we'll live. A little fighting demonstration now. We're going to have our century Roman auxiliary against our first century Roman auxiliary um, to see what, how they used to fight and you know how those fighting styles evolved and how they were compared to each other. Battlefield. 
tent all day so if you want to have a mooch or look at the weapons or anything. <sighs> 